But uh, so yeah, those those are the first ones that come to come to mind. Come to mind. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Bride's Head Revisited. The second book, like the Lord of the Rings. Uh oh. No. Yeah, the author was Yves Lenoir, who wrote Bride's Head Revisited. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Why do you wear the long black robe? There it is. Perfect. Didn't call it a dress. That's a, it's a step in the right direction. So, uh, this is called a cassock. Uh, if you're over in parts of Europe, you might hear it called a satan. That's a cassock. And, you know, historically, like, this is what every priest wore all the time because. Historically, it was a long time before people started to wear pants. They just wore, you know, robes, right? And so, like, that's just what people wore all the time. And so, for the most part, priests, the vesture kind of matched what, uh, what common vesture was for a, lo a lot of people. And yet, it was always something d distinctive as well. And so, you know, I think the vast majority of priests who you probably see wear, you know, wear black pants, black shirt, what we commonly call clerics. Um, and the cassock is just kind of the older version of, of the clerics. Like, that's kind of all that that is. So a priest has his choice if he wears one or another at one time or another. I enjoy wearing the cassock for a few different reasons. Um, one is I like the historical connection. I just like that this is something that's been part of our tradition, part of our history. Um, I also like how distinctive it is, as if you know, the black pants, black shirt, white collar aren't distinctive enough. Um, well, there's something that clearly says, like, okay, something's up with this guy. <laughs> and not like I, I want to attract people to me, but if I can be somewhere, maybe somewhere especially in public, like, and, they, and so, someone just stops to think a little bit longer, like, what is that? And it leads them to think about God, then I think that, that's a benefit. I also remember I was in seminary and we were on retreat and the uh, bishop actually who was giving the, the retreat talked about how all people, but you know, priests in a particular way are called to live poverty, chastity, and obedience. And he said those things are imaged very well in a cassock. He said poverty, because it's, it's not, not a flashy garment, like you know, you're not going to see this on a runway anywhere, right? <laughs> but it's just a very simple garment. Um, chastity, because it hides the body, right? Not like I have a whole lot to show, but like uh, it hides the, huh, hides the body. And obedience, because, you know, it's not the most uh, free-moving thing. And so, so there is some sense of I'm restricted in it. And so it's an image of poverty, chastity, and obedience, things that I'm supposed to be living each day. So kind of for all of those reasons, I wear the long black robe. Okay. Oh, this is a long. <laughs> During all things new, oh boy, where was your quote, hope I get to go to? <laughs> With the follow-up question, when you were assigned to New Melly, was your thought, where's New Melly? <laughs> Answer the second one first, uh, no, because I had been to New Melly. And believe it or not, I was a deacon at St. Patrick in Wentzville. And so when I was there in Wentzville, we would come down occasionally, pass through New Melly. Uh, we had dinner. What was that, Fireside? Yeah, yeah right. So, so we had dinner occasionally you know, there. So I had at least seen New Melly, uh, been, been through it. So I, I knew exactly where I was going. Um, where was my I hope I get to go to? Wow. Uh, it's really really tempting to say here, right? Um, that seems to be the right answer. No, I, I, um, I think as a priest, part of the promise of obedience and doing what the bishop asks of you is a certain detachment from, I really want to do this. And so while we are human, while we have preferences, and while they did ask the priest for input as far as, is there a certain type of parish, rural, suburban, urban in the city, large, small. I mean, they asked us for, for this sort of input and feedback, generally speaking. At the same time, at the end of the day, like the bishop asks you to do something and to go somewhere because he believes it's best for the diocese and for the parish. How, how am I going to say no to that? 
And so for myself, I, I thought, well, when the bishop asked me to go, I'll, I'll go there and I'll do my best and I'll probably be very happy. So um, there, there were some assignments that I looked at and thought that'd be really challenging.